Welcome back, everyone. We are here today with episode 2280 of the Cabral Concept. All of the additional resources today will be at stephencabral.com forward slash 2280. Why that's going to be important is because today I'm going to share with you exactly how chronic stress makes you fat or causes your fat, your adipose tissue to grow even without you overeating or under exercising or under moving your body. This is really important because there's a lot of people out there struggling in quiet by themselves, not really telling anybody to lose weight. So they're going too low on food, too low on calories, too low on carbs. They're trying to move their body even more, and yet it's not budging. And I want to share with you, and I want to make, keep this a quick show because I want to keep it as concise as I can, because you cannot undereat and overexercise without causing more of the issue that's causing you to gain weight. So I want to share with you what that is today. A little something, you may have heard of it before, called stress. But you may not have heard before how stress impacts weight gain. I've done a, I did a webinar on it before. Let's see if I can link it up today at episode 2280. But what I want to share with you is just a simple equation and how stress directly causes weight gain even without excess calories. And I know this isn't going to make sense because you've been led to believe that only excess calories cause weight gain. It, it, it doesn't. It does not in most people, it just doesn't, and it affects women disproportionately, which means we have many women in our practice that are eating sub-1,400 calories, sub-1,200 calories a day, and still not able to lose weight. It is not all about calories in, calories out. Sometimes it is about a dysfunctional metabolism, and that dysfunction can actually start with stress. So let's go over the physiology that most people are just not willing to break down and share with you. And it's what happens when you begin to increase stress. So as you increase stress in the body, you begin to increase a hormone called cortisol. So as you increase cortisol, what happens is it's a glucocorticoid. It breaks down stored liver glycogen or Worst case for you is it will actually break down muscle tissue. And if it breaks down muscle tissue, now your metabolism goes even lower, especially if you're not weight training. And again, this is proven with people doing 16-hour fasts and not weight training. The majority of weight they lose is muscle. I was just literally chatting with someone the other day. They're on a program. They have lost, I can tell you right now, I'm going to do the math in my mind, 17 pounds. And when they did their body fat, they had lost... Uh, about 3.5% body fat. They decreased from about 24.5-ish to about 20, 21. And the problem is, with that math, they lost about 8 pounds of muscle, right? 8 pounds of muscle. That is not good because that is not easy to get back. And that is your metabolism, right? So super important. But let's, let's keep the muscle out of the equation for a moment. When you're stressed, you produce a hormone called cortisol. It's a glucocorticoid. It breaks down glycogen. That's its job, and it uses that for fight or flight. So now, without you even eating more carbs, this is what the low-carb, no-carb carnivore people won't tell you, is that you can still spike blood sugar. Okay, so you're spiking your blood sugar. Why? Because your body's looking for a fast fuel source. I broke this down a few podcasts ago because your body, as it ramps up heart rate as well from norepinephrine, a neurotransmitter, that's an excitatory neurotransmitter for fight or flight, increases that. So your body's like, oh, okay, well, let's move into more of the anaerobic system. So now your body, get your heart rate revved up, you start to get some dry mouth, like all the signs of you're in <laughs> fight or flight. Okay, well, now your body's bringing glucose that you didn't even eat into your bloodstream. All right, not good. It'd be fine if you're actually in fight or flight because you could use that glucose as a fuel source. But the problem is you're just stuck in traffic. You're just, you know, yelling at your kids. You're just whatever it might be, but you're stressed, right? You're stressed. I'm not trying to make light of the situation, but you're stressed, okay? So it raises cortisol. It's going to increase glucose. What else happens then? Well, the other thing that happens is it increases then insulin. So insulin increases in your body to do what? Well, it's a fat storage hormone, right? So if we increase insulin, the pancreas is producing more insulin. The insulin's like, well, we got to get this sugar out of the blood. That's not good. So what does it do if you don't use it? Well, it brings it to fat. It's a fat storage hormone. It can do other things, but that's a really good use because if there's glucose in your bloodstream, it's like, oh, well, we'll save this for later, right? So it just increases what? Body fat. 
It increases the size of the adipose tissue. Think of cells expanding. That's how you be, people become what's called over fat. That's the clinical name for it. That means a BMI above 24.9, but really above a 29 once we start to get to more of what's considered the obese category. And again, I'm not here judging. I'm not here telling you what size you should be. That is not what I do. I have no vanity-based metrics. I honestly could not care less about that. What I care about is helping prevent dis ease in the body, helping people heal, but also helping people live a long, healthy, happy life. And I can tell you, if you're above your ideal weight, what's going to happen is you're going to be more susceptible to the four causes of mortality of early death, cardiovascular, high blood pressure and stroke, type 2 diabetes and cancer. And I don't want that for you. I don't want it for you. I don't want it for your family. I don't want it for anybody. So we have to teach these things because stress is a real killer. It really is. Problem is conventional medicine just doesn't know how to tie it to the end result because they're just so lost. They're just so lost in looking at blood work and providing pharmaceuticals. It's just, it's, it's literally so mechanistic right now. I don't understand how on earth they call it healthcare. It's palliative sick care. They literally just palliating symptoms. Anyway, I digress. So what happens is stress equals cortisol equals Glucose breakdown or glycogen breakdown raises blood sugar. You raise insulin levels. Eventually, your body becomes what? Insulin insensitive, not sensitive to insulin, desensitized, and you end up with type 2 diabetes. But either way, we're creating fat storage. So what do we do when we get type 2 diabetes? Okay, you're going on some insulin-mimicking-based drug. And now what does it do? Well, it just adds more body fat anyway because you already have high glucose when nobody shared with you how to decrease the stress or improve your overall nutrition right? Really, really important. But it does one more thing, this stress thing. And this is the tough part. And this is really, really the tough part. Because the other thing is you could say, be like, all right, I'm going to work on this, 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 and this. Great. And you can do that. Here's the thing. When you become stressed and you start to produce that cortisol, you start to lower leptin or leptin sensitivity goes down. And this is a big problem because after a while, initially stress will, you'll get rid of, you won't have an appetite because you're in fight or flight. Chronic stress though, that's a different story. Chronic stress, even though you are adding more and more body fat, typically in that scenario, when you're adding more body fat, your body's like, whoa, we're not hungry anymore. We've stored enough fuel because that's what body fat is, right? Body fat is stored energy. That is the reason why you store body fat. It would typically get you through the winter time when there was less food. You store it or you get you through a week when you didn't have any food, right? It gets you through the famine times. So the problem is when you're stressed, that hunger hormone leptin, your body doesn't hear it, doesn't listen. So what happens is you're still hungry. You're adding more body fat, but yet you have more and more hunger for a couple of reasons. One, you're producing a lot of excitatory neurotransmitters. One of them is norepinephrine. It's a stress hormone as well. Well, it can act like a stress hormone. So when you're producing that norepinephrine, your body's saying, we're going to burn out. We, we need to calm down. We're dealing with too much anxiety, too much overwhelm, too much irritability. Your body's like, we need to produce more GABA, which is the more inhibitory, relaxing, anti-anxiety neurotransmitter. Or we need to produce more serotonin, the happy, feel-good neurotransmitter. So we're going to use all these B vitamins, right? That, those get used up. We're going to use more of the glutamine, things like that for, for GABA. Those get used up and it can't compete. Over a while, you start to burn out those neurotransmitters. Now, conventional medicine would just love to give you more antidepressants. And I'm not saying there's not a time and place for antidepressants. But if you're only producing a little bit of serotonin, well, that SSRI, that selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor, it's not making more. It's not making more serotonin. You, you can ask your doctor. It's keeping more in the bloodstream, into the synaptic cleft for you to use one available. Why doesn't it work? Why does it stop working? If you don't produce enough serotonin, that SSRI is going to have diminishing returns. We need to start teaching our doctors and us in general. I don't have much faith, again, in the, the medical system, but I do in you, right? So I'm not telling you to come off your pharmaceuticals. I'm saying work on the underlying root causes. And stress is one of those major, major points. When I wrote my book, The Rain Barrel Effect, I went through the de-stress protocol. The first half of the book is how you got here. 
The second half is how you're going to get well. Diet, exercise, stress reduction, toxin removal, rest, emotional balance, scientifically backed supplement protocols, and a success mindset. Sounds like a lot, but it's not. It's the reason why people get well. It's the reason why they overcome things. Stress is one of those components. And if you and, and just, again, take it from someone that was a complete stress case, right? In my, my young years, for sure. You have to understand is that I, one of the reasons why I didn't get well is because I could not regulate stress. And so, yes, nutritional supplements like L-theanine, ashwagandha, a product like Adrenal Soothe can help. No doubt about it. But you want to be working on the psychology part of it. You want to be working on maybe the meditation, the binaural beats, the nasal breathing. You want to work on all of those things. Biofeedback is great. So you want to work on all of this over time to be able to decrease stress. And then look at all of those stressors as well. What are your specific triggers? What are the things causing you stress in your life? It could be food, could be pain, could be gut issues, could be all sorts of issues, right? Work, relationships, et cetera. What can we do in order to be able to better handle that stress? And if we can't get rid of the stressor, then we need to be able to reframe the way that we see that stressor specifically. So just remember, whenever someone tells you just to eat less and move more, you say, I appreciate your advice. I'm going to go a little bit deeper. That's it. Today, we'll hopefully share with you the exact reasons why chronic stress can cause you to become overweight, gain more weight, and make it nearly impossible to keep the weight off. I'm always here to help you with additional questions. If you want to test your cortisol levels and your stress levels and your thyroid and all your metabolism hormones, you can do that at stephencabral.com forward slash labs. You're going to choose the one that says stress, mood, and metabolism. But again, I never want you to think that you have to run these labs through me. You can find an integrative health practitioner level two. All right. You can find a local naturopathic doctor. Don't feel like you ever have to work with myself or my practice. I want you to keep your options open, choose who you may work with, or just begin a protocol on your own. You can get a free copy of my book. If you haven't read my book yet, it's free. We pay for the printing. You just pay for the shipping and handling. That's at stephencabral.com. I'm also happy to answer any questions you have. Every single weekend, I answer a dozen questions from the community. Just let us know how we can help. We want, we want this to be the year that you truly take back control of your health, your mind, your body. All right, take care, everyone. Have an amazing day.